Con mantas y pósters contra el racismo, una veintena de activistas protestó este lunes en Washington con motivo de la inauguración informal del Hotel Internacional Trump. Los inmigrantes y musulmanes son bienvenidos aquí. El Hotel Trump no. Rezaba una de las mantas ondeada por miembros de la coalición Anser, que se apostaron frente al hotel ubicado sobre la histórica avenida Pensilvania de la capital estadounidense. Remodelado con una inversión de 200 millones de dólares en lo que fue el viejo edificio postal, Trump rentó el inmueble al gobierno federal en 2013 por un periodo de 60 años. Sus lujosas 263 habitaciones inician a un precio de 800 dólares y hasta 5,395 para la suite Postmaster. Aunque el hotel y la Torre Internacional Trump abrieron sus puertas este lunes, el millonario tiene previsto encabezar una inauguración más formal en el mes de octubre, justo antes de las elecciones presidenciales del 8 de noviembre. Para la toma de posesión presidencial, el 20 de enero el hotel elevará su tarifa de un townhouse a 100 mil dólares por noche. Desde la corresponsalía de Notimex en Washington, José López Zamorano. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Melania, Tiffany, Laura. Thank you very much. Well, we're very proud of our company. We've built one of the great real estate companies of the world, but it seems very insignificant compared to what we're doing now. And as soon as we're finished cutting the ribbon, I'm off to North Carolina, New Hampshire, and back down to Florida. Well, I hear we're doing very well. With the notable exception of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, this is the most coveted piece of real estate in Washington, D.C., the best location. I'm honored to be here today to support my family, and especially my daughter Ivanka for her dedication to this project. She worked so hard. I'm also honored to have a chance to thank the incredible team of people who brought our vision for Washington's historic old post office to life, including hundreds of construction workers, electricians, maintenance workers, and so many others who helped make this project a reality. They're really the important ones. A project like this demonstrates what is possible when a team works together for a totally common purpose. It also shows how to work with our government and to get things done. My theme today is five words. Under budget and ahead of schedule. That's what we did. Under budget and ahead of schedule. So important. We don't hear those words too often in government, but you will. Our agreement with the government required completion of the project by 2018. We were dramatically ahead of schedule on this project and under budget. We turned a property that had been neglected for decades and which was losing huge sums of money for the federal government into a major revenue producer and job creator. This is what I want to do for our country, and this is what we're working so hard to do. Right now, Just about everything our government touches is broken or they break it. It's always over budget, behind schedule, and simply nothing works. Look at the Veterans Administration, where new hospitals come in hundreds of millions of dollars over budget, and yet our brave veterans still don't get anywhere near the kind of care they need or deserve. Look at our decaying infrastructure. Look at our aging military equipment. Our military is so depleted, despite having the greatest people on Earth. I mean, they are the greatest people in our military, but it's so depleted. The tax code is broken. The education system is broken. We spend the most for any of any country on education, and we get bad results. And so many parts of our country are in a state of disrepair. And now, it was just announced yesterday that Obamacare is in freefall, with premiums going up massively, and places like the great state of Arizona going up over 100% in cost. Unaffordable, unusable, and doesn't work even if you can't afford it. The American people know 
what this election is about. And they see it every time they get their health care bills in the mailbox or ride down a highway that's broken or go to an airport that looks like it's from a third world country. Remember, Hillary said herself, it was called Hillary Care before it was called Obamacare. She made that statement not too long ago. Now she's trying to withdraw that statement. She wants to withdraw that statement so badly, Newt. And by the way, congratulations, Newt, on last night. That was an amazing interview. That was an amazing. We don't play games, Newt, right? We don't play games. I've loved my life and business, and I've loved getting to share my dreams with my family. It's an incredible family. And Melania, I want to thank you very much. You have been amazing. My job is to look at undeveloped spaces and imagine what they could be. These are spaces that have no hope, have no future. But you need imagination, and you need the ability to get them done and to unlock their potential and to unlock the potential of the people working on those spaces and on those projects. And we have so many things we can do for our country. Where others have only dead ends, I've dreamed of the amazing possibilities that we have. That's why government has turned to me in the past to fix projects that had gone nowhere, that were considered total disasters. Whether it's turning a landfill at Ferry Point after many, many years of futile work in the Bronx, New York, into a world-class golf course that's now open and doing unbelievable business, or revitalizing the facade of the great Grand Central Terminal, or building and saving Wolman Rink in Central Park after eight years of futility and spending massive amounts of money and getting it done in four months for a very small amount of money. So many different things. Today is a metaphor for what we can accomplish for this country. Same kind of thing. This building is a historical landmark, a true American original. It had all of the ingredients of greatness, but it had been neglected and left to deteriorate for many, many decades. It sat there so beautiful and so empty and was falling into a very, very bad state of condition. It had the foundation for success. All of the elements were here. Our job was to restore its former glory honor its heritage, but also to imagine a brand new and exciting vision for the future. To create a new place for people and families to come together, and a magnificent place at that. I've been very lucky, and I've led a great life. Now I want to give back to the country which I love so much and has been so good to me. I want to go into the inner cities, the poor rural communities, and the failing schools, and I want to work on a national plan of revitalization. I'm tired of the excuses from our politicians. I'm tired of being told what cannot be done. I'm tired of people asking Americans to defer their dreams to another day, but really what they mean is to another decade. Enough waiting. The time is now. We can achieve our goals for this country and we can do so more quickly than anyone ever thought possible. There is nothing we cannot accomplish. The United States is great. It's great. Its people are great. There is no task or project too great. There is no dream outside of our reach. Don't ever let anyone tell you it can't be done. The future lies with the dreamers, not the cynics and the critics. Everywhere I go in this country, all I see is untapped potential waiting to be set free. And the biggest element of all is our incredible people, the people of this country. They're just waiting. They're waiting and waiting, and I think maybe now their time has come. But we will realize never that the potential we continue to put on our faith and the faith of our country 
And we have to say, the word never will always have to be taken out because we have such tremendous potential. We have to choose the most optimistic path. We have to choose to believe not our politicians that in many cases truly don't know what they're doing, but to believe in ourselves and in our country. If we do that, anything is possible. I'm asking America to join me in dreaming big and bold and dream for wonderful things in our future. Let's close the history books on the failures in Washington, and let's open a new chapter of success and prosperity for all of our people. We have a divided nation, a seriously divided nation, all of our people. That is how we will truly make America great again. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So we're now going to the lobby. Uh, this is a ballroom, brand new. This was where the old shopping center was, which was not a part of the building. We made it a part of the building. And this is now the largest luxury ballroom in Washington. And great. We're going into the lobby. We're going to cut a ribbon. Then I'm going to North Carolina. <laughs> Thank you.